Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hoping you're having a good math day. Thank you for watching this clip on domain and range. We're given a function and we need to find the domain and range of the inverse function. So let's find the inverse function first. Okay, so solution. Inverse function basically says, look, you're going to need rewrite x in term of y. And then there's one more step. You have to swap it at x, y. And when we get there, I'll explain why we do that. Now, if you look at this thing, it's hard to solve for x unless you complete square on this side. I know a completing square is not a pretty thing for a lot of students. And I don't blame you. When I was learning this myself, I hate it. So what I did is I pulled a minus sign in the front. Okay, now I'm going to add a box, subtract the box. The whole reason I'm doing add box and subtract box is I want to regroup this so I can actually finishing the square or completing square. Minus 8x, I'm going to add a number. And this number I'm going to add is take the coefficient in front of the x, divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. For our case, it's 16 here. I'm going to subtract the number so I don't change what I started with. Now I have minus x squared minus 8x plus 16. I'm going to group those. And then I have minus 16 left alone. And then I have minus x minus 4 squared minus 16. And let's clean it up a little bit. x minus 4 squared plus 16. Okay, So I basically distributed this minus sign in there. This is my y. Now, from here, I can almost get there now. I'm going to rearrange a couple terms. And uh, let's see, what do I end up? Let's just do it one at a time. 1 minus 16 is equal to minus x minus, oh, I'm running out of room here, minus x squared. And then I'm going to take the minus, because I can't take square roots on this side yet. I'm going to have x minus 4 squared. I'm going to switch the minus sign on this side. Now. I have an opportunity to take square roots. Now, you ever wonder why they give you that x is bigger than 4? That makes sense not, right? Because otherwise, I can't ensure this one is a positive number. So x minus 4 is equal to radical root of 16 minus y. And then I have x is equal to 4 add 16 minus y. OK, now, at here, this is, I think, is one of the most confusing thing. I apparently found my inverse function because I solved for variable x in term of y. Now, the weird thing is, mathematically, we insist having the, the variable, the de independent variable to be x and dependent variable to be y. It's so confusing. It always reminds me of a cross-dressing almost. It kind of reminds me of a trip we took to Grand Canyon once. I wanted to go down there, but it was snowing. The only long thermal underwear I have for my son is a pink one. Boy, do we have a power struggle there. So in the end, I did get to see the Grand Canyon, but I hope I didn't cross-dress him too much. So here comes the cross-dressing part. We're going to switch x and y. We're insisting the variable that changes on its own is x. And then y is the dependent variable. And then we're going to call this inverse of x. Isn't that weird? Okay, This is one of my least favorite step. It confused, confused me the first time when I saw it. Why would you want to swap them around? Anyway, as I get older, I kind of stopped fighting it and just kind of accept it. All right, back on to our inverse function. The inverse function is equal to 4 added the radical root of 16 minus x, where x is our domain. OK, so domain for our inverse, for our inverse function here, we have to ensure that 16 minus x is larger than 0. So I don't have to take square roots of a negative number. That's saying that x has to be less than 16. Okay, so this is the inverse function's domain. Now let's find a range. When x is 16, that's as large as it gets, then we have a 4. Okay, so y is going to be 
any number that's bigger than 4. Here is the graph of the inverse function here, g inverse of x. When x is equal to 16, let's say this is 16, y is actually a 4. Okay, And the graph looks like that. It's a square roots curve. So as you can see, the domain is anything bigger than 16. Okay. The range is anything bigger than 4. All right. Well, that's how we handle domain and range. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan. Please comment if this video has been helpful. Oh, I appreciate a thumb up. Till next time. Have a confident day.